On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong made his infamous step onto the moon for the first time. This was the third mission to enter a lunar orbit and the first of six missions that landed on the surface. In December 1972, Apollo left the moon for the last time. It has now been over 50 years since astronauts have stepped foot on the surface. In that time, NASA has proposed sending people to Mars multiple times. In August 1969, director of NASA Werner von Braun had already created a plan to send astronauts to Mars in 1981, using nuclear rockets called NERVA, which were already being successfully tested throughout the 1960s. Nuclear rockets couldn't be used at launch because they couldn't generate enough thrust, but they were incredibly efficient, which allowed them to provide thrust in space for long periods of time, which is perfect for interplanetary travel like to Mars. President Nixon put together the Space Task Group, which along with Von Braun created a plan for NASA following the Apollo program. The Space Transportation System was developed to facilitate reusable transport to Earth's orbit using a space shuttle. Then the crew would switch to a Nerva rocket to begin their nine-month journey to Mars. This plan involved space stations around both Earth and the Moon, as well as a lunar surface base. The Nerva rocket would be used to transport astronauts between these different surface and orbital stations. In this plan, a base would also be established on Mars throughout the 1980s. Ultimately, Nixon canceled the NERVA project in 1973, despite it being successful in showing the great capabilities provided by nuclear rockets. The program was supported by Congress, so Nixon's decision was his alone. He cited budget restraints, despite NERVA only costing $400 million, which was a very small portion of the aerospace budget. 1,100 people lost their jobs in the process, many of whom were instrumental in creating a technology that would have immensely improved American capabilities in space. The technology has still not been replicated. This is the reason that no people have traveled to Mars. Nixon wanted Congress to fund a supersonic plane called the Boeing 2707, which was designed to cruise at Mach 3. It was rejected by Congress in 1971, prompting Nixon to cancel NERVA. As early as 1966, three years before the first manned landing on the moon, Congress began cutting NASA's budget. Funding decreased from 4.4% of the federal budget to just 1% in 1975 and NASA's employee count dropped from 420,000 in 1966 to 218,000 in 1969, and continued to drop into the early 1970s. The budget of NASA and its number of employees has not increased since these cuts. Von Braun proposed raising the budget back to previous levels in 1969 for his multi-decade plan, but such proposals were not popular in Congress or with the general public. The space transportation system was mostly unfunded, except for the space shuttle, which first flew in 1981. But there were no plans for a space station in the near term. In 1984, Reagan announced space station freedom, but no development occurred, and a potential lunar base was also ruled out. Eventually, the International Space Station was constructed between 1998 and 2010, using the space shuttle. Two Viking probes were sent to Mars in 1976. Viking 1 lasted until 1983, and Viking 1 until 1980. Since 2004, there has been a constant rover presence on Mars, with NASA sending Spirit and Opportunity in 2004, Curiosity in 2012, and Perseverance in 2021. Even though there haven't been any human missions, the conditions on Mars are well known. Following the NASA budget cuts, human spaceflight was limited to low Earth orbit, and exploration of the solar system became exclusive to probes and rovers. The security risk that the Soviet Union initially posed by sending people and satellites to space was quickly negated when the United States sent people to the moon. The space race was over, and the general public was not interested in space travel. When President John F. Kennedy said he wished to send men to the moon by the end of the decade in 1962, polls indicated that less than 50% of Americans supported the initiative, and that remained true throughout the Apollo program. Even when the Apollo 11 moon landing became the most watched television broadcast of all time, the public reaction was lukewarm, and most people were not concerned with continuing human spaceflight further into the solar system. The budget cuts Congress voted for during the Apollo program were a mistake economically. It is estimated that for every dollar spent on the Apollo program, $7 was created. Technological advancements are good for the economy, and NASA provided hundreds of thousands of jobs to highly skilled workers. NASA should be compared to the military, which gets more funding per year than NASA has ever received. The total amount spent on Apollo was $280 billion. The military budget for 2024 is $844 billion. This means that between 1961 and 1973, Apollo cost a third of what the military spends every year. In both cases, the funding is not going to social programs or directly helping people. They are both investments in technology, but one is concerned with furthering human progress into space, and the other designs weapons to kill efficiently. The military is not a force for good. The military budget is extremely overinflated, which has created a military-industrial complex. A large assortment of companies hiring highly skilled workers to design weapons which hopefully will never be used. 
A lot of people's livelihoods depend on the military-industrial complex, but Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and Raytheon all mark up their costs absurdly high to increase profits at the expense of the American taxpayer. Three days before leaving office, President Dwight D. Eisenhower gave his farewell speech in which he denounced the growing military-industrial complex that was emerging, stating, In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Eisenhower had led Operation Torch in 1942, which saw Allied troops fight the Axis in French Algeria and occupy North Africa to allow for an invasion of fascist Italy. He also led the successful Allied invasion of Normandy on D-Day in 1944. He led the effort in liberating France and occupying Germany, and was one of the highest ranking generals of all time. He had seen the brutality of war and he did not want profit to arise from that destruction. Ultimately, Eisenhower was right. What he warned against is what has occurred. Eisenhower also disliked the Apollo Endeavor, and critiqued it after leaving office, stating, Anyone who would spend $40 billion in a race to the moon for national prestige is nuts. Eisenhower was a man who wanted the needs of the people to be met first before money was given to the military or NASA. And this philosophy was shared by people who cut NASA's budget. They argued that funding shouldn't be wasted on rockets, but instead be used to help people. But the vast majority of that funding was going to the military, so NASA shouldn't have been the target of budget cuts. Funding NASA to the extent that Warner Von Braun proposed would have not have made a dent in the federal budget compared to the exorbitant funds directed towards the military. NASA could have had permanent settlements on the moon and Mars, and perhaps journeyed to the moons of Jupiter, but America has been preoccupied. This is why watching 2001 A Space Odyssey feels more impactful than ever, because it is already one of the greatest movies ever made, but it also gives us a future that never occurred. The spaceship in the movie is traveling to a moon of Saturn. We see a space hotel rotating to create artificial gravity, and a base in one of the craters of the moon. By 1968, the quick acceleration of rocket technology in the 1960s gave Stanley Kubrick and Arthur C. Clarke the idea that within 30 years, humanity would travel beyond the moon and Mars into the orbits of the outer planets. The AI technology depicted as HAL 9000 in the movie is only now becoming possible, so perhaps the predictions were a bit too optimistic. But the NERVA nuclear rocket program could have provided the advancements we see in a space odyssey. The movie is not just science fiction, it is a depiction of what human spaceflight could have been if the American public and its politicians considered what the technological priorities of the country should be. The Vietnam War is responsible for people viewing military spending as more important than NASA because America wasn't winning the war, because it wasn't prepared for the specific and unique aspects to Vietnamese guerrilla tactics. America never wanted to be caught off guard again, but military spending didn't alter the consequences of bad planning in Iraq. Buzz Aldrin explained that Apollo astronauts didn't go to the moon to write poems, they went there for science, but Apollo has become a source of inspiration and pride in humanity's achievements. The flags on the moon will fade, but they will always be there to showcase American ingenuity. NASA will always be a source of national pride even if the agency didn't live up to its full potential.